Anyway, so we're gonna get going. I'm all excited. Uh, let's start off actually lying down as I stand up here. So you're gonna lie down on the floor. We're gonna work on a little breathing first. So contain our excitement for a moment. We're gonna come down, take a couple nice deep breaths in whatever way uh, feels good to you first. So just a couple nice deep breaths. There we go. And I want you to think about, as you observe your breath, we wanna just try to expand more into your abdomen in all directions. So out and up and into your low back. Deep breath in, nice long exhale out. So with each breath, we're trying to get a little bit more expansion into the torso. There we go. And with each exhale, we're just trying to lengthen it a little bit more, a little longer with the exhale. Breathe in, nice expansion. Breathe into the floor. Big, long, controlled exhale. Great. All right, we'll do a few more breaths here. As you get more comfortable with it and you start getting some expansion, I want you to focus on trying to breathe through your nose. So if you can breathe in and out, that's great. Initially, it might be easier just to breathe in through your nose and then out through your mouth. Here we go. And we're still focusing, just breathe, expand your torso in all directions with air. Long exhale. Very nice. Now we're gonna do two breaths. Breathe in as much as you can. Exhale all the way. Forceful exhale all the way out. And on your exhale, I want you to hold for 10 seconds if you can. After that, you're gonna do the same thing. One more big breath in, as much as you can inhale. Long exhale, force everything out, like you're an accordion being pushed shut, and hold the exhale for about 10 seconds. Okay. Next up, uh, you can take a peek here. You don't have to get up all the way. Uh, we're going to do some stuff from the floor. So we're going to do some hip rotations. I'll show you from this angle. So lying down, you're just going to widen your heels. You're going to rotate in and out. Just like that. So you're pivoting off your heels. And initially, just think nice and easy. We're warming up the hips here. Warming up the hips. Rotate. As you get more comfortable with that, then you're going to just activate your hip muscles a little more. Try to open up the hips as much as you can. You might feel the outside of the hips working the glutes. And then try to rotate closed as much as possible. If you run out of room going in, you can widen the heels a little more. Rotate so you start to feel some muscular activation. You might feel some stretching going on. Nice. Just a couple more there. Awesome. Okay, and before we get up, then we're gonna do shoulder stuff. So, what I'm gonna have you do is put your, your hands, your paws together. You're going to reach back towards the floor and they're probably gonna wanna separate and that's okay. Reach all the way down towards the floor if you can. Draw a big circle, it's like we're doing snow angels. So a big circle down on the floor and bring your arms down to your sides. Excellent. Now we're gonna reach up towards the ceiling again, hands together. Same thing here, you're gonna reach back towards the floor. Try to keep the elbows straight. 
Hands, try to touch them to the floor if you can. Slowly reach them out and away from your body as you glide them along the floor. Down to your sides. And we're gonna do two more like that, and I'll show you this angle so it's clear. Imagine I'm lying on the floor. So hands up, try to keep your back flat, reach back towards the floor, reach away from your body like you're trying to make the biggest circle possible as you're gliding along the floor. Good, back staying relatively flat. And then we'll just go one more, reaching up, hands together as long as you can keep them there. As they separate, reach back towards the floor, elbows straight, glide along the floor as you reach away, and down. Whew, fantastic. Now we're gonna come up to standing, uh, and I am already overheating, so this is fun. Uh, big, big rule for everybody though is don't pass out, remember, so be mindful of that. Okay, so next we're gonna work, so we're gonna do a lot of uh, shoulder and scaps and spine. A little scary scaps and spine today. So um, we just, just did a little bit of shoulders, we're gonna work a little more spine. And I apologize if you can't like see as well what I'm doing, but that's okay. Um, we're gonna start with some flexion and extension of the spine. So kind of like the cat cows, but from standing. So I'm gonna be here, I'm gonna tuck my chin, I'm gonna start by rounding my upper back, mid back, lower back as much as possible, you can tuck the pelvis. Then starting with my head and neck, I'm gonna look up, extend through the upper back, mid back, low back. So I'm trying to go this way. And then we'll do that again. So we're going to tuck the chin, try to round through the upper back, round through the mid back, low back, tuck that pelvis underneath. So the abs are working a little bit. Then untuck, starting with the head, neck, upper back, mid and lower, and you can untuck the pelvis. Then we'll start from the bottom. So if you're extended, everything is extended, tuck the pelvis, so pull up, abs are on. Start rounding through the low, mid, and upper back. Now, maintain your rounding up above. Untuck your pelvis, so bubble butt, stick the butt back. Extend through the low back, mid back, upper back. Nice, and then we'll do one more there. So you're gonna tuck the pelvis, round slowly, one vertebrae at a time is the goal. Tuck all the way, big rounding, try to find a nice stretch in your spine, and then untuck. Stick your tail back and up, okay? Everyone's got a tail, right? Extend, look up. Awesome. Okay, cool. Now we're going to do a lateral tip. So imagine your spine, we're gonna to try to stretch it and bow it to the side, okay? So we'll start going to the right. So we're going to stretch up, tip, and be mindful as we do this. You wanna to try to find a stretch through here and, and you're not just moving your shoulders and neck. So we wanna make sure we're moving through that spine. Reach up and tip. So imagine you're stretching. Stretching, stretching, stretching. Stretching rather than folding. I don't know if that imagery makes sense to you. And then we'll go another one to the right. Stretch up, tip. Nice. And up and tip. Awesome. Then we're going to do a little rotation. So from here, I'm going to have you actually go with your arms out, out like this, making a T shape, and we're going to rotate. So you can have your feet a little wider than hip width. Try to lock in the hips for the most part. Um, and we're going to rotate our chest and hands, so like a helicopter. All right, so we'll go, let's go starting to the left. So you're gonna rotate the chest to the left as much as you can. Make sure you're breathing. And then slowly go over to the right. Trying to keep the belly button mostly pointed forward, but it, it is gonna change a little bit. 
Mine is like decent, but my I think my tigger costume is making it look a little worse. So now we'll go back again to the left, trying to keep your pelvis mostly forward, but it can turn some. And then back to the right, spreading those fists away from each other. Nice. Now we'll come back to the center. Okay, little hopping break, all right? <laughs> You don't actually have to hop, but if you can and you're comfortable with it, I would go for it. Um, if you're not comfortable with it, you can do like a little, just a little marching, get the, get the body tip up. Um, I really actually like doing some shaking it out to relax some of the muscles and also get you warm. So we'll just do that for a bit. Um, <laughs> so what we'll do next, you can continue hopping if you'd like, or you can rest, whatever you, you prefer to do. What we're going to do next is a lateral tip, like we practiced, and then shoulder car. So yes, this is very exciting. Uh, what I like about it is that when we do the shoulder cars, what tends to happen is there's a little compensation. So we're actually going to lean into that, uh, quite literally, and then hold that, that position. Be mindful that you're not cranking the neck too much, and then don't do it yet, and then we're going to do holding this, so like you're contracting your whole left side and that right shoulder, you're gonna really feel it up here. It's gonna be pretty sweet. Um, we're gonna do a full shoulder car. So I'll walk you through. We're gonna do two on one arm, then we'll switch and do two more. So tip to your left, think stretch up, tip to the side, contract that left side. Right shoulder, palm is out, paw is out. Reach across your body and up, 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 staying as close to your ear as you can. Rotate the palm away, reach back behind you. Way back, keep your tip. Come down towards your side, paw goes back, back towards the ceiling. Externally rotate, turning the paw, reach up towards the sky and try to bring that biceps as close to your ear and your face as you can as you come across. Reset if you need to, think about keeping a tip as long as it's, it's not painful for you. And we'll go one more, nice and slow. As we go up into flexion here, you might feel a big stretch. Reach back, rotate the palm, reach back behind you. I find some pretty nice muscle activation there. Now we're gonna reach back again, rotate, reach up, 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 and across towards your ear and face and across your body. Whew. All right, take a little breather for a moment. Sometimes it's a little harder to, uh, to breathe when we're kind of cranked to the side there. Okay, observe, think about how that felt, and then we'll see how it feels on the other side. So here, and what you may notice, my left shoulder is a little limited in flexion, so it's very tight. So same deal, find that stretch first, contract that whole right side. So this is cool, this is like a, an isometric oblique uh, contraction the whole time. So now, left shoulder coming across. Reach up as high as you can. Internally rotate, turning the palm away. Reach back behind you. Back, back, back. Trying to keep the arm as close to your body as you can the whole time. Reach back. Externally rotate, reach up and across your body, and down. Take a moment if you need to, reset, get that tip, reach, cross, up, internally rotate, turn that paw away, reach back behind you. Excellent, now reverse it. Good, find your greatest range of motion, squeeze it out. Rotate, bring that arm up across your face and chest, and down. Okay, fantastic. Huh, now, so now we're gonna work uh, the, other, the other side. So we're gonna work your tail where you bounce on. Um, actually, no, unfortunately, um, our tails don't seem to work that way. It's a fiction. Uh, but we are gonna work the toes. So let's start off doing uh, big toe raises. So feet planted. You're gonna try to lift just your big toes. 
and then set them down. And just your big toes and set them down. If that's easy for you, awesome. Hold a little longer and I want you to focus on actively trying to pull up even higher. Great. Another um, progression you can make is trying to limit the activation in the lateral four toes. So you'll notice you're making progress if you can lift those toes up without pressing as much with the, the four side toes. We'll just do a couple more. Super important for balance and, and a solid foundation. Um, so bouncing, jumping, it's, it's very important to get those toes working well. Okay, now we'll switch gears. So big toes stay down, lift those lateral toes if you can, and set them down. Lift the lateral toes, see if you can spread them out away from the big toe, and also focus on trying to keep those feet and ankles stable, so we're trying to minimize the caving inward. Minimizing that inward cave. Good. We'll do a couple more here. So you're trying to keep a little bit of an arch in your foot. And these can seem trivial, but it can make a huge difference over time. There we are. Just a couple more. And I don't know if anybody else is sweating right now. <laughs> could be the costume, could be the um, ultra excitability. I'm not really sure which. Okay, now you can rock forward a little bit, relax, uh, move those feet, get them feeling all right. You can you feel free to bounce at any point. Oh no, oh there we go, okay, good. Okay, so next up what we're gonna do is the shoulder blades, the scaps. So, we're gonna be standing, and um, here I got my sleeveless shirt so you can see everything really well here. Uh, so we're gonna start with our left, our left shoulder blade. Arm is at our side, so we're just moving this one. We're going to Roll it forward, shrug it up, pinch it back, and pull it down. Roll forward, shrug up, pinch back, pull down as much as we can. Let's go one more. Roll, shrug, pinch, and pull down. And then we'll reverse it. So we're going back. Shrug up, roll forward, and down. Pinch back, rest the body still. Shrug up, roll forward, and down. And one more big range of motion. Get those muscles working. Find your biggest range as we pull down. All right, you can shake that out a little bit if you need to. And then we'll hit the other one. So. Elbow straight, ideally. We'll start going this way. So we'll shrug forward, or roll forward, shrug up, pinch backward, and pull down. Roll, shrug, pinch, pull down. Focus on contracting all those muscles in the big circle. One more here. And be mindful, uh, observe where you're feeling restriction and limitation. We'll go backwards now, so reverse. What direction, you can think about what direction feels challenging. Pinch back, shrug up, roll forward, pull down. One more here. So for a lot of people that pulling downward and retracting back is challenging because we tend to be kind of up and forward a lot. Okay, excellent. Hope we're feeling all right so far. We're gonna come down, downstairs to the floor and do some cat cows. Obviously, I mean, we had to throw these in. So another, another important point for, for developing power, bouncing, all of that good stuff. Very important we move well through the spine so that we can absorb energy well. 
and dissipate it. So quadruped position, just like we did standing, okay, we're gonna lead with the pelvis. So think about, again, imagine your, your belt line, um, anterior tilt, posterior tilt. So untuck, tuck, bubble butt, tuck. So I want you in a quadruped position. We're gonna start extended and we're gonna tuck the pelvis underneath, tuck slowly round the spine, spreading to the mid back, upper back, tuck your chin, big rounding. Hold that position for a moment. Now untuck, so your tail is going back and up, right? Extend through the low back, through the mid back, upper back. Keep those shoulders pressed away. Now, same deal, tuck the pelvis. Curl your, your tail between your legs. Round through the low back, mid back, upper back, and you can tuck your chin. One more here, untuck, try to keep the rounding in your upper back as we untuck, droop through the mid back, upper back. Nice. Okay, now we get to go the other way. So we're going to hold this extension, start with the chin. So your, your tail is pointed up and back the entire time until we get to the very end. Tuck your chin, round through the upper back, slowly work your way to the mid, low back, then we're tucking the tail. Wonderful. Hold that tail tuck. So for me, I can even hold my tail. Here we go, and we're going to extend. Chin is up, droop through the upper back, mid back, low back. Tail goes back and up. And last one, let's go another one. Tuck the chin, round, 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 as much as you can. Work your way down, tucking the tail, and I want you to really hold the end point. That's why we're doing an extra one here. So, Hold that end point, feel all the stuff contracting in your front side to hold that flexion. Take a breath here if you can. Okay, and then we're gonna undo it one more time. So look up with your chin. Hold your tail tuck. Droop through the upper back. The mid back. The low back. Tail kicks back and up towards the ceiling. And hold that extension for a couple breaths. That whole back side, everything is contracting and shortening. Three, two, one, and you can relax there. Okay, so we're getting nice and, nice and loose and limber. Um, that spine stuff, it's wonderful stuff, especially the flexion and extension. It's gonna make room for all the other movements like rotation. So, next up, we're gonna work the uh, the hips and knees a little bit. We're gonna do some knee hinges. Um, so we're gonna pull, we're gonna be lying down. I'll demonstrate really quick and then we'll work on it. We're gonna be lying down, pulling the knee up, trying to extend, pull back and down. We're gonna do five reps per leg. And um, you know, if you, if you feel really strongly about it, I could add a sixth or seventh, but let's stick with five for now, okay? Um, so you're going to straighten your right leg Pull your left knee up as high as you can, keeping it bent. From here, you can even use, you know, keep your paw here. Don't let it step away, okay? And you're gonna slowly extend your leg as much as you can, which likely will not be all the way. Slowly extend and hold. Four, three, two, one, bring it down. Good, now see if you can pull it up higher. Hold it there, slowly extend. Might get some shakes, that's totally fine. Four, three, two, one, slowly bring it down. Awesome, see if you can pull a little higher. See if you can pull a little higher, dig that right heel in, slowly extend. Woo. Three, two, one, bring it down. We're gonna do two more. I'm gonna let you relax and shake that leg out for a moment. Okay, shake it out, shake it out. 
Awesome. All right, same deal. We're gonna do two more with this leg. Pull up as high as you can. Good, really slow. Extend, feel that stretch. Feel those hip flexors and quads working. Yes. Three, two, one. Bring it down. And don't worry, you get to do one more. All right, so pull that knee up. Good, abs are working now too. Don't let the knee move, slowly extend. Slowly extend, Whew. good, three, two, one, bring it down. Huh. All righty, uh, relax for a moment, okay, you can shake it out a little bit, take a couple breaths. It's natural when we're doing that, that the breathing is not as um, deep, it's gonna be shallower, and that's okay. But just like with lifting weights or doing other exercise, Good to take a little breather in between. All right, now we get to do the other side. So this is great for hip flexion, and hip flexion is really important, obviously, for jumping. Um, and for life, so that too. Uh, so let's go, right leg up, okay? Pull up to wherever you can. Hold that position, good. Don't let the knee move, slowly extend. Slowly extend, hold, three, two, one, bring it back down. What's exciting here is usually the first rep or two, you're used to the fatigue in the other leg, so it just feels great. Pull the knee up a little higher if you can. Slowly extend. If you find your body wanting to go fast, check it, make it a little slower. It will listen to you eventually. And slowly bring it down. Good, one more big one, then we'll get a little rest. Pull up as high as you can. Dig the left heel in, slowly extend that right leg. Imagine the hamstrings muscles stretching. Three, two, one. Slowly bring it down. Relax there for a moment, you can shake them out. Whatever feels good, okay? What is cool about this is learning to contract and use this tissue in the hip flexor and the quad in order to straighten the leg will help often reduce tension in your hamstrings long-term. So let's go two more with this right leg. Pull the knee up as high as you can. Pull the knee up as high as you can. Excellent. Here we go, slowly extend. Good, hit that resistance, push through, contract. Contract the top of that leg, push through it. Three, two, one, slowly bring it down. Whew. Wonderful, we get one more here. Pull the knee up, slowly contract. Contract those, those muscles. Pull up, pull up, pull up. Three, two, one. One, relax. Haha. -ha. All right, fantastic. Now we're having fun. Excellent. We got about 90 minutes left, so. Uh, so what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna do a little stretch for the, uh, we're gonna do a little pigeon stretch. And we'll do some additional stuff with that. So we're gonna start with the left leg crossed underneath. So if you think starting quadruped, step the right leg back, cross the left, and then we can slide back. Just like that. Again, stretching the bouncing muscles, all this good stuff under here. There we go. From here, just find a good stretch. You can play around with the, that pelvic tuck if you tuck and untuck. If you try to untuck, so again, try to push your tail back and up, you'll probably find a little bit of a deeper stretch. There we are. Okay, we're gonna do a couple things from this position now. So, find a stretch, I'm gonna allow, let's take a few breaths, get some passive stretching in. And uh, when I tell you to, we're gonna do some knee hinges from here. So basically working the other way, we're working on closing the knee, 
uh, working on those hamstrings. And because this hip is, is a bit extended, you might feel a stretch in that quad and hip flexor, which we were just working. Okay, so with that right leg, start slow, just hold for about a second, contract the hamstrings in the back of the leg, try to pull the heel towards your butt, hold for a moment, and bring it back down. Very nice. Very nice. Sometimes those hammies might get a little crampy. Okay, pull up again. Pull a little longer this time. Good, and back down. You will get more of a stretch and it'll probably be more of a challenge if you slide your right knee back. You do not have to do that, but if you want to try it, you certainly can. We're going to do two more here, holding a little bit longer. So pull, it's like a biceps curl. Pull, contract, and hold. And slowly let it go. Wonderful. Let's go one more here. Slowly now, pull. You're going to slowly meet that resistance. Pull into it. Try to close that angle of your knee as much as you can. Three, two, one. Slowly bring it down. Relax. All right, we can ease out of there. Excellent. Okay, uh, and then we get to switch sides. So we're gonna go to the right leg so you can Stretch the left leg back, cross the right, slide back, find a nice fun stretch. Great. And this stretch really, um, we're multitasking a bit, so, but I want you to find a stretch that works for you. So you can play around with the pelvic position like I said. You can also turn your chest a little bit, try to find where you get a good stretch in a spot where it feels like you need it. So you can explore a little bit. Take some nice deep breaths. All right. Very nice. Okay. Another breath or two, and then we'll do some of those knee bends, knee hinges. And I know what you're thinking right off the bat. You can absolutely attach a band to your heel so that you can pull with extra resistance. Very exciting. Or you can get a partner. You could like hook your heels together and pull against each other. Next time I do a class in person, we'll try that. So let's go, here we go. Let's think about first one, you're just getting it ready. Just getting it ready, slowly pull. Pull the heel towards your butt, hold for just a second, bring it back. If, you're, if your body's not used to this, that might cramp you up a bit. Okay, if you are getting cramping, that's okay. You might need to come out and breathe. Good, and let's pull again. Hold a little longer this time. Nice. Slowly bring it back. Often that cramping occurs when our body is just not used to having to function in that position. So oftentimes our knees, we're not used to contracting and creating force there. So let's go two more. Pull up, hold, squeeze. Try to close that angle. And now slowly relax. Beautiful. We'll go one more here. Slowly contract, pull into that resistance as much as you possibly can. Yes. Three, two, one. Slowly bring it down. Beautiful. Okay. You can come out of that. We'll shake it out a little bit. Excellent. Uh, we're going to come back up to standing, and if you have something to hold on to, that'd be great because we're going to do some hip cars, uh, some standing hip cars. So after a lot of the hip stretching, the passive stretching especially, we're going to add some active hip cars. So I have got my stick, which fortunately it's the right colors. Um, so very important. It's the only thing I worry about matching on, just the Tigger costume, that's it. <sighs> okay. We're going to do hip cars with our right hip. And what I'm gonna have you do is for the first two reps, we're gonna go a little faster and I'm not as much worried about compensation. So what I want you to focus on 
is just trying to activate all your tissues around your hip. So I'll, I'll demonstrate really quick. So oftentimes I want you to keep your, your whole body still, try not to move your pelvis. What I'm saying now is allow yourself to turn a little bit, pull your hip in as big a range as you can, allowing your body to compensate slightly. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. So you're gonna pull across, think about contracting your groin muscles, hip flexors, glutes. So your goal here is to do something resembling a hip car, um, but find the deepest stretch and contraction you can in every angle of the range. Okay, we're just gonna do two reps here. So this can be feel really good. Sometimes by blocking movement consciously, uh, we can end up not getting quite the same activation. So I often find that the hip cars afterwards that are more focused, I get more out of them. So just reach as far as you can. Allow your body to move a little bit where it wants to. All right, cool. Let's switch legs now, and then we'll go back to a little bit more, um, more strict hip cars. So same deal on your other side. You're still trying to externally rotate, you're still trying to get your full range, but you're, you're allowing plenty of imperfection. That's never the goal anyway, but allow your torso to move a little bit. Think about, okay, can, how much can I contract my glute? How much can I get my TFL and hip flexors to work? And my abs and groin muscles. Two reps there. I find these can be pretty fun. There we go. Because sometimes there's tissues and, and stretches we just don't access if we're trying not to compensate. So I like throwing in both. Okay, now we're gonna do two reps per leg uh, with minimal compensation. So you're still gonna probably turn a little bit, but try to focus on the pelvis not moving. Stay really tall. That's your main, your main focus, staying tall. So bring the knee and ankle up and across, externally rotated, up high, pry that knee out away from the belly button, kick the heel back and up, internally rotating, reach back behind you. Drive the heel back, Pull the knee and ankle up towards your shoulder. Come up, lead across with that right ankle, and down. Very good, one more. So you're still trying to find that activation you got. Contracting here, here, pull up, pry away. Belly button stays straight ahead. Kick the ankle back and up. Reach back behind you. Good job, drive the heel back. Pull the knee and ankle up towards your shoulder, like we're going up and over a hurdle. Reach up high, ankle leads the way across. <sighs> All right, now four smiles before we switch hips. That's very important, that's actually probably the most, most important one. Okay, and then we'll go to the other one. <sighs> okay, so same deal. Now a little more strict, stay nice and tall. Good, pelvis is, is minimally moving. So knee and ankle come up and across. Pull the knee up, pry it out away from your belly button. Ankle kicks back and up, reach back behind you. Staying tall, drive the heel backwards. Pull the knee and ankle up towards your left shoulder. Ankle's gonna have to drop as the knee continues to rise and pull the ankle across, belly button staying straight on. All right, we get to do one more. Pull up and across, groin is working. Up high, pry away, ankle kicks back and up, reach back behind you, drive the heel back. Pry the knee and ankle up, 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 knee stays high, ankle comes across and down. Wonderful. Okay, take a little breather for a moment. Good, we're just doing great on time. And then we get to work a little bit of balance, which we'll come back to. So also very important, working on that balance. We got the hips going, we got the spine going. I like to think of um, 
Well, the better our joints work and move in general, it's like we have a better suspension system, better shocks, um, and that makes the balance better. So we're gonna put it together a little bit. I want you to stand on your left foot, okay? Lift your right foot, and we're going to do a tap forward and tap back. Okay, start small. Uh, you can allow that knee and ankle to bend of the left leg. The chest can reach back and up, okay? And if you can reach back far enough, you can get that tail actually to help you out. But we'll see. I don't, I don't know how many people that will apply to, or animals. We'll do a couple more. What's fun about this is you're gonna hit a point, you hit a threshold where it starts really burning. And that's what we're gonna try to get to. So we're gonna do several more, okay? If you can get pretty good distance, focus on really minimal tap, and then you can go slower. And you can turn your head to make it more challenging. So if you look around, that'll make it tougher. Good, about 10 more seconds here. Embrace the burn. And you're right, you can do it with a backpack on as well for extra weight. Very smart. All righty, relax, shake it out. Okay. Excellent. And then we get to do the other side. So great opportunity here. Try to keep things the same. So if you were focusing on a point, try to do that again. Uh, whatever you're doing, try to keep it fairly consistent and just observe how the balance feels one side to the other. Okay, so right foot, boom, same deal. We're gonna tap and tap. Tap and tap. If it's really challenging, Start with really small taps and you can allow more weight to tap down. And you can even hold on to something. And then you can progress by going slower, reaching further, turning your head, and then by having someone throw stuff at you. All right, we'll do a few more. Embrace that burn. Also notice like if one leg starts burning a lot quicker, all good information might mean that uh, the stability is not quite as good on one side, so it has to work really hard. About 10 more seconds here. There we are. Nice. It's very important tiggers have good balance, um, but actually, again, they spend a lot of the time on the tail, so it is what it is. <laughs> okay, you can relax. Relax there for a bit. Awesome. We are going to work a little bit more on the spine. So now that we've got the, uh, the lower body worked out a bit and the knees prepped, we're going to go to kneeling position. If this is not super comfortable for you, you can get a little extra padding. I prefer toes pointed because I like that stretch and coming down like this for the spinal cars, um, partially because it just locks in this position. Again, if this isn't comfortable, you can come up tall, you can tuck your toes, whatever is comfortable for you. And we're going to do essentially what we did in the beginning, standing, except now we're going to put it all together. Okay, so we're here. Think about trying not to move your neck here, because from this position, we're not going to get an enormous amount of movement, and a lot of times the neck can end up moving instead of the rest. So if you kind of keep your thumbs by your chin so it doesn't move, that can help. <laughs> You're going to tuck round your spine as much as you can. Rotate your whole chest and shoulders to the right as much as possible. Think about pulling the chest and shoulders away from your left hip bone. Tip your right shoulder towards your right hip. Extend back, so arch through your low back, mid and upper back, reaching up, and then you're gonna start tipping to the left, left shoulder tips to the left hip. Rotate your chest and shoulders to the left as you start rounding your spine and bring yourself back to the center. Slowly come up. <sighs> okay, and we're gonna do the same thing, but the other way. So you're going to round, focus on really trying to get that upper, mid, and lower back, back rounding and not just the neck. Rotate the chest and shoulders as much as you can to the left, away from that right hip bone. Tip your left shoulder towards the left hip. 
Good. Start extending through the low back, mid and upper back. Tip the right shoulder towards the right hip. Rotate the chest and shoulders to the right as you start rounding and then bring yourself back to the center. Awesome. We're going to do one more each way and now you're essentially trying to find that stretch but what we're going to do is imagine so, and this is, I think Adam helped with this. I usually say draw a circle with your elbows. Think about making with this X, this midpoint of the X, the intersection, draw as big a circle as you can with that while keeping your arms tight to your body. Okay, so you're rounding, you're gonna do the same thing, rotating and tipping, but just think about drawing as big a circle with that X as you can. Okay, big slow circle till you get back to the center, then you can come up tall and we'll do the same thing. Drawing the line down, then to the left, drawing a really big circle, just focusing on a big stretch at every angle. If that's happening, then you're moving your spine a lot and that's the goal. Slowly make sure you're breathing. Once you get back to the center, you can relax there for a moment. Awesome. Okay, next up, we are going to do some swimmer hovers. All right, so we're gonna do them, uh, let's do them standing. I'm gonna take a little load off the knees here. And imagine though, so I, I want everyone to be standing up. It's more fun that way. It's, it's better for morale really than if you're face down on the floor. <laughs> Uh, so we're going to be doing the swimmer hovers like this, essentially like the double shoulder cars, but I do want you to really imagine that the wall is right in front of you, okay, and you have to pull your hands back as much as possible. So we're going to do two of those, and then we're going to do infinity hovers, but we're going to do something in between that, which I'll let you know. So, first step, hands come behind the head. Yes. All right. Pull the elbows back, pinch those shoulder blades. Pull the hands away from your head. Reach up into a Y. Rotate the thumbs down and palms back and away as you reach back, 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 back. Keep rotating internally. Reach as far as you can. Bend the elbows. Try to pull those hands up your back. Set them down. Take a breath. Okay, tuck the pelvis, abs are on, pinch the elbows back, lift the hands, extend, start rotating those thumbs up, palms up, and keep rotating externally up into that Y. Pull the hands down behind the head and neck. Relax for a moment. Great, we get to do another one. So same deal, remember again, try to pull away. Okay, the imaginary floor is lava, the one in front of your face. Okay, pinch back, lift the hands, extend up into a Y. Rotate the thumbs down and away, reach back behind you. Keeping the hands high, rotate a lot, pull your hands up your back, relax for a moment. Okay, focus on staying as tall as you can here. Pinch the elbows back, try to lift off your back, extend, palms go back and up towards the sky. Rotate the thumbs up, palms up, keep rotating, keep pulling away, back and away as you come up, bend your elbows, pulling the hands behind your head. Whew, wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. So good news, um, we're gonna work on some squats Okay, because that's very important again for, for bouncing. Okay, <laughs> uh, so we're gonna do three squats. Now we're gonna take a little different approach. I want you to start with the feet about hip width apart. Then we're gonna do a rep with your feet as narrow as you can go. Then we're gonna do a rep with the feet wide. Okay, because when you jump, you can land in a whole multitude of different ways and we wanna make sure you're prepared for that. Uh, or when you do activities of daily living, that's fine. So, feet normal, comfortable width. 
Grip your paws together, okay? Pull into your chest. So shoulder blades are pulling back, create tension through your upper back. And we're gonna use our hip flexors, just like we did with those hinges, okay? To pull down in the abs, okay? So you're pulling yourself down as deep as you can go into this squat. Slow coming down. As low as you can go, keep tension through your core. Keep pulling as low as possible. Slowly drive up, just as slow as we came down. Drive your heels through the floor. Slowly coming up. Four, three, two, one. Shake it out a moment, relax. Great. Now, we're gonna go feet narrower. Okay, so if you, if you very rarely do any squats with the feet narrow, this might be pretty challenging. There's a good chance you will not go as low as, as you did before. And that's totally fine. Just listen to your body. So pull in. Because this is a little more challenging as we come down, it might be helpful to reach forward to counterbalance. Okay, so same deal. Start pulling down. Abs and hip flexors are actively working to pull. Close the angle. Those knees are gonna pull forward a bit as low as you can go. Max it out, and now slowly drive through the feet. Quads are working, drive yourself back up. Three, two, one. Excellent, okay. One more, we're gonna go wider. Okay, and here's the challenge. If, if this feels like you have pretty good uh, squat mobility here, you can try doing this from the, the hands behind the head position, pulling the elbows back. Okay, so wide stance. Think about gripping the floor with your feet, driving those knees out, externally rotating those hips. Okay, we're tall. Start pulling yourself down as low as you can go. You can widen those feet. Pull, pull, pull. Only as low as you can control. Hold that end point. Pull down lower. Pull down lower and slowly drive up. No sense of urgency. No sense of urgency. We're just driving up. Cruising. Four. Smile. Three. Two. One. And we're up. Wonderful. Okay. Now, don't worry, we still got a little bit of time. <laughs> uh, so now we're gonna do a nice little hip flexor stretch while we do infinity hovers. Okay, so in the infinity hovers are basically the swimmer hovers, but we're alternating arms, we're going opposite. So yeah, you can do a quick practice if you want. We're gonna do one each direction, then we'll switch legs and switch arms. No, not switch arms, same arms. <laughs> you have two arms, we're gonna use both of them. So let's go left knee down, tuck the pelvis, okay, so tucking the tail underneath, right, squeeze your glute, get a nice comfortable stretch, whatever's comfortable with that back foot, you can tuck or point it, nice and tall, left hand back, right hand back, left hand behind the neck, right hand at your low back, okay, and we're going to go slow here, especially in the first rep. You're gonna lift the hands away from your body. Left hand kicks up, right goes down. Internally rotate the left as you externally rotate the right. Reach, now the right reaches up, the left reaches down. Slowly bend your elbows, pull the hands back. Remember, we're trying to pull the hands backwards the entire time. Left glutes on, pull the hands away, extend, Rotate, they're rotating opposite directions. Reach up and back with the left, down and back with the right. Bend the elbows, slowly set them down. Take a breath, and then we'll switch legs. Okay, so same deal. We're gonna start with the right down and the left up. Tuck the pelvis, squeeze that right glute, find a stretch. Okay, lift the hands backwards and away. Slowly extend the elbows. 
Right externally rotates, left internally rotates. Reach back as you're going up with the right, down with the left. Bend the elbows, pull them back. Relax, reset in a nice tall position. Wonderful. Okay, lift the hands away from the body. Extend, rotate, keep rotating, keep rotating. Reach back as you rotate, back, 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 back. Slowly bend the elbows, set the hands down, take a breath. Awesome. Okay, wonderful. Final thing we're gonna do is just some nice comfortable breath work. So you can go either lying down um, or seated position, kneeling, whatever feels comfortable for you. We're gonna do a little chill out breathing to finish up. All right, so I'll walk you through it here. So first step is just take a few breaths, take a few comfortable breaths, Return to your normal, your normal breathing pattern. Good. If you can, try to breathe in and out through your nose, or at least get a few breaths through your nose. That helps signal to get more into a parasympathetic rest and digest state, which is what we want after a training session. And now we're gonna do some box breathing. So we're gonna start off, four second inhale, four second hold, four second exhale, and four second hold. And we'll cycle back through that. Four seconds on the inhale, four second hold, Four second exhale, four second hold. If that feels really good, you can continue with that. I'd like you to try, if you can, extending the exhale. So you're still doing four second inhale and four second hold. Now I want you to try to do a six second exhale and six second hold. So we're just extending the time we're spending in the exhale, which is also a great strategy to get more into that resting recovery state. If it feels good to extend it even longer, that's great. If you find it challenging to extend that exhale more, that's not uncommon at all and that's okay. I just want you to try your best to Make it a little bit longer. Great. Just a couple more breaths here. Observe what you're feeling in your body. Try to slow your heart rate down. Get some good expansion with the inhale. Try to release tension from your body with the exhale. Relaxing on the exhale. Find that nice, calm, slow heartbeat while you're holding the exhale. All right. And you all made it.